Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I just want to see. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. You. Okay. So let's get started. So sorry for the delay. Actually, even I had to leave early today, but somehow it's Krishna's will that I spend some more time with all of you. So let's start then. So this will be the agenda for today. Okay, I'll share my screen just. Are you all able to see the screen, the big one? Can anyone please confirm? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So, uh, actually I have written it as 39 to 41. Yeah, 39 to 41 because uh, like I'll be traveling tomorrow. Uh, so, I really don't have much time today. Uh, I just need to wrap up as soon as possible. But yeah, it's not that I'm going to hurry through all the shlokas. I'll give the proper explanation. So, we'll just cover three shlokas today. And all the three of them are very important ones. Okay, some really good lessons we are going to learn today, you know, when uh, we are discussing these shlokas. I think three very important lessons we are going to learn today. Okay. Uh, so, be nice shloka. Then in the next session, I think we'll be ending up with uh, you know chapter one. So that's the good part. At least one chapter we were able to finish. Okay. So as usual, I'll try to dedicate this session to uh, the for the founder Acharya of Iskon, His Grace Divine, His, His Divine Grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada Ji Jai. And whatever I'm going to speak. I'll just uh, repeat what I have heard in the lectures of Srila Prabhupada. Whatever I am going to speak, I'll merely repeat what I have read in the books of Srila Prabhupada. And I'll merely repeat what I have learned in the Guru Parampara and by my Siksha Guru. So this will be the agenda. Like, uh, first we'll do the Mangala Charan as usual. We'll invoke, invoke some auspiciousness by chanting some Pranam Mantras. Then we'll discuss the Shlokas 39 to 41 and then question and answers. So, since these, as I said earlier, these three shlokas are very important ones, especially their explanation and their purport are very important. So I would also request you that once, uh, you know, we are done with this session, please go back home and try to read. Okay, read the Bhagavad Gita every day, actually, we should try to do that. But specifically, these three shlokas are very important. Well, some very good takeaways are there. Okay, and then after that, uh, I, you may, I would also encourage you, all of you to ask as many questions, you know, following after the sessions, uh, following the session. And then please share your realization in the video, you know, that we upload on YouTube. Okay. So that also gives us a lot of visibility. So this is all about the agenda. And uh, I'll start chanting some pranam mantras. Uh, those who know this can remain on mute and repeat after me. Those who don't know, please uh, just listen very carefully because listening is also very, very purifying. Om Jnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Rao Shri Uta Padukamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Shri Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripri Vanshakal Patarubhyas Chakripa Sindhubhya Eva Chapatita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prem Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gora Trishenama Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Krishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine 
नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंगते पातम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरिओ Now, let's straight away go to the um, locus. I'll share my screen again. Okay, so is it visible nicely the screen? Yes, Prabhu ji. Okay, so who wants to go first today? Uh, let me just pick in order actually, so I can see Ivana Mataji first. Mataji, would you like to go first? Okay, Ivana Mataji has raised her hand. Yeah, please go ahead, Mataji. Okay. I can't hear you. Do I repeat, Do I repeat yeah. after you? Or... Okay. Yeah. So I'll just try to read the shlokas and you can just repeat after me. Okay. Brahmana Kshatriya. Okay. Sorry. Not this one. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one. Ulakshaye Pranashanti. Ulakshaye Pranashanti. Kuladharma sanatanaha Kuladharma sanatanaha Dharme nashte kulam kritsan Dharme nashte kulam kritsan Adharmo bhi bhavatyuta Adharmo bhi bhavatyuta You can read just the translations, Mataji. With the disruption of the dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished and thus the rest of the family be involved in religion okay. so thank you so much and yeah so according to this particular verse like uh, you know what we have seen something uh, some very important things we need to see okay so in the purport just see what Krishna Prabhupada is saying that according to Varnashram institution okay so first let's discuss what this Varnashram is okay so this Varnashram system, as you know, like most of the people basically confuse with the caste system, okay? And it's very different from the caste system. And at a lot of times, you know, even ISKCON has been accused of, uh, you know, creating a divide in the society because we speak so much about, uh, you know, this Varnashram. And mistakenly, people take it to be the caste system and they think that, okay, we are just, you know, talking about the four Varnas, actually. So this is not the case, basically. Varnashram is very different from the caste system and it is the natural division which occurs in every society, okay, where, irrespective of the fact whether a particular society follows this, uh, you know, a caste system or not, it doesn't matter. This Varnashram will always be there, okay, because this Varnashram has been created by none other than Lord Krishna himself, okay. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Okay, now this is very important thing to note here, right? He's saying Chatur Varnam Maya Srishtam. That means the four Varnas that I have created, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, they have been created by me. And then he's saying Guna Karma Vibhagasha. That means it has, it has been done on the basis of the Guna and the Karma of an individual. Okay, nowhere it has been mentioned that this Varnashram basically depends upon the birth of an individual. Okay, that means uh, the way we follow the caste system today. That the son or the daughter of a Brahman is a Brahman, son or daughter of a maybe a Rajput or is a Rajput, and you know, like that. That is not the correct way of segregation. Okay. It's entirely wrong, basically, right? What Krishna is saying that it is being segregated on the basis of guna. That means there are three modes of material nature, okay, the mode of goodness, mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. That is Satogun, Vajogun, and Tamogun. Okay. The guna which is more predominant in one individual actually decides what kind of behavior he or she will exhibit okay so based on that 
and the based on the work that we do okay the karma okay on these two bases only this entire society is divided into four varna, varnas basically okay so irrespective of the fact that whether a particular society is following the uh, caste system or not these four uh, divisions will automatically be there okay and just look around your, yourself and you will get the answer okay like if you say you know consider a group of people or maybe the society at large okay there will always be one certain group of people who will be you know kind of a very intellectual class okay more inclined towards teaching and philosophy and you know doing some intellectual stuff okay giving them a hefty increment in salary or you know paying them good for what they are doing is not something you know which will motivate them okay but anything which is very intellectual or you know which is very uh, you know challenging to the brain basically right that will actually excite them a lot okay so that is basically we can consider them as the brahmanas okay they are visionaries and they just look at the bigger picture of the everything okay so those are the brahmanas secondly there will be a certain group of people who are natural administrators okay who are leaders basically who like to manage people like they thrive best when you know they are given a few people to manage okay or the military men who are there right uh, who are very skilled in military arts okay so these uh, these kind of people will always be there okay so they can be considered as the kshatriyas then there will be a third group of people who have a very good business acumen okay who are very good at herding the cows who are very good at working in the fields okay or getting the work done in the fields okay and all these things are there they can make money out of you know anything like they have such good business acumen that you give something and something and then they can convert it into a business okay so those are the vaishya community okay and similarly there is a labor class basically who uh, work work with their hands they are very skillful with their hands and they you know like work and then they support the other three varnas actually and in this way with mutual cooperation and uh, you know uh, the well being actually this entire society actually flourishes okay so this is the concept of varnashram varna varnas four varnas okay so we see that it is very different from the caste system that uh, you know which is prevailing here caste system has actually caused only divide in the society only if the people who are only the people of society they identify their two varna they start acting accordingly and then they start cooperating with the people of other varnas then all the problems of the society will be resolved okay so it is as simple as that similarly there are four ashramas okay so what are these ashramas if we suppose divide the say consider that the human life span is of 100 years okay so we can divide it into four parts the first 25 years is supposed to be the brahmacharya ashram where the or the student life okay where the kid or the student or the teenager like they are supposed to you know like uh, at least in the previous uh, yugas they, there was a system of gurukul they used to reside with their spiritual master and you know help him in the day to day activities you know, like that and then they also like uh, studied the vedas okay from the spiritual master so that was the in the previous yuga but at least in this yuga what uh, is there that the, the student class you know that we can consider as the brahmacharya but then the concept of brahmacharya has gone for toss these days like that is a separate topic of discussion we will not uh, deviate there okay the second phase of life is from 25 to 50 years which is the grihastha ashram okay where you know or the family life where the person enters into the family life uh, begets some children and you know takes care of the entire family for the next 25 years okay from 25 to 75 years comes the retired life or the vanaprastha ashram okay and from 75 onwards to 100 year till the end of the life basically comes the renounced order of life or the sanyas ashram okay in this sanyas ashram the person actually 100% devotes himself to the service of the lord and he is fully you know absorbed in the spiritual practices okay so these are the four varnas and four ashramas that has been you know uh, given in our vedas in our scriptures basically and what happens when we try to follow this varnashram system very seriously then slowly and gradually the entire uh, society you know like no matter uh, to which particular varna or which particular ashram we belong we slowly or gradually start making progress and ultimately we end up perfecting our human life and what is that perfection of human life that is to break the cycle of birth and death okay so this is the importance of varnashram but unfortunately in kalyuga everything has gone for for a toss okay because first of all in kalyuga most of the people are in the mode of passion and ignorance okay 
so there are not there is there are no brahmanas i'll tell you like it's a fact like uh, completely kaluga is devoid of brahmanas even uh, the other varnas like we are not very sure you know sometimes we show some uh, very occasionally we show some you know uh, mood of goodness we are in the mood of goodness sometimes mostly we are in the mode of passion and then in, towards the night time we are in the mode of ignorance you know that kind of things are going on so that's why shri prabhupad used to say that in kaliyuga everything is topsy turvy right it's very difficult to understand which particular uh, you know varna a person belongs to okay that is why in the shastras also it has been clearly mentioned that kalo shudra sambhava that in kaliyuga everyone is a shudra so what can be done in case of uh, in, in this case like uh, there were different set of responsibilities for each and every varna okay but uh, we are not following them we won't be able to follow them in this kaliyuga okay so the only thing that we can do is to chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare just chanting reading the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is the best life manual that we have okay so by reading that we can simply just uh, follow the do's and don'ts which the bhagavad gita gives and automatically our lives will be perfected okay so this is the importance of varnashram system although it's not you know prevalent anymore it has been corrupted in the form of the today's uh, modern day caste system that we see so yes uh, i mean this is what our scriptures have to say about varnashram okay so this is first thing second thing what arjun says here is that by destruction of dynasty the eternal family tradition is vanquished and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in pure religion right so now very important thing that how this uh, destruction will lead to irreligion destruction of family leads to irreligion so it so happens that all the elder members of the society okay basically they are the experienced folks and they are supposed to guide the younger members okay that what to do what not to do what is the ritualistic practices that have to be done on these these occasions you know like that so just imagine if uh, suppose all the elder members of the family are killed okay then what will happen obviously there will be no one left to guide the younger folks and it's quite likely that they will start living life according to a, to their own sweet will okay they will simply not follow any ritualistic rules and regulations and then that means they will become irreligious slowly okay and in this way the entire family tradition will be destroyed and the whole society will slowly you know like uh, degrade with, uh, with irreligious values and then ultimately it will be completely destroyed okay so this is the importance of the elder folks okay of the society so this is what arjun was very skeptical about that if in this war all the elder folks of his dynasty are killed then there will be no one left to guide the younger ones and the younger ones will actually you know indulge into irreligious practices and then finally the ultimate ultimate destruction of the family will happen okay no one will be, will be left there so a very important teaching you know that we can get from this particular verse okay that even in today's age like what we see is that uh, we are completely into nuclear families okay like maybe husband wife one or two kids maximum okay in some cases there are three but then those are also becoming you know rare cases these days okay So there is no elder person in the family to guide us. Okay, I mean those who are maybe the localites, they can you know live with their parents. You know we have seen, but then they also slowly they are preferring to move out. You know because they want to live life in their own way. You know citing the reasons of privacy and you know so many things. So there is no there are no elder members to basically guide. You know the younger generation. So what to do in this kind of a scenario? okay and this is where bhagavad gita and the association of devotees come into picture yes because simply by reading the bhagavad gita and simply by following you know what bhagavad gita is asking us to do we can perfect the human life actually we can break this cycle of life death and rebirth we will never ever indulge into the irreligious practices every time we will with full confidence we will be aware of you know what has to be done you know, as a part of re- religious practices or spiritual practices okay similarly the association of devotees especially the senior devotees okay if there is there are no elder members in our family to guide us the senior devotees can actually guide us okay what to do in certain situations so this is why krishna consciousness is so important this is why association of devotees is so important and this is why reading the bhagavad gita is so important so this is one very important take away from this particular verse we'll move on to the next verse i'll share my screen again 
Please note down the questions. We'll take it towards the end of the session. Uh, Ishita Mataji, will you be able to read? Yes, Prabhuji, I can read. Okay. So I will just read and you can just follow after me. Adharma bhi bhavat Krishna. Adharma bhi bhavat Krishna. Pradushyanti kulastriyaha. Pradushyanti kulastriyaha. Trishu dushta shuvarshneya. Shri tu dushtanti varshneya. Jayate varna sankaraha. Jayate varna sankaraha. Yeah, just read the translations, Mataji. Perfect. I'll explain. When irreligion is prominent to the in the family of Krishna, the women of the family become polluted. And from the degradation of the womanhood, O oh descendant of uh, Vrishni. Vrishni. One uh, comes unwanted progeny. Progeny. Okay. Thank you so much, Mataji. Another very important verse. Okay. Uh, we will see uh, line by line like how it is uh, so important. So first of all, Varshneya. Okay. So here Arjun is addressing Krishna as Varshneya. So this is another very, you know, like uh, what to say, an indirect reference to what Arjun is giving to Krishna. Okay, and uh, we'll see that is also very interesting. First, let's start with that. So, in the previous verses, we have seen that uh, um, Lord Krishna is actually addressing Arjuna on several occasions as Partha. Okay, Parth means the son of Pritha or Kunti. And we have seen in the previous sessions that uh, how uh, you know, Kunti was named Pritha, right, and how she was later on named Kunti. Okay, so. Krishna actually deliberately uses this term Parth every time just to remind Arjun that he is coming in the dynasty of uh, you know, great Kshatriyas. Okay? Kshatriyas like, uh, you know, uh, of... Uh, and Kunti was basically uh, uh, basically the sister of uh, Krishna's father Vasudev. Right? So Krishna is saying that, okay, my father was also a Kshatriya and your mother Punti is the sister of my father. So, like, you know, you are also a Kshatriya, she is also a Kshatrani. So, you are also a Kshatriya. So, why are you showing so, so much of cowardice and, you know, kind-heartedness towards the Kauravas? Just stand up and fight, right? This is what Arjun was, uh, sorry, Krishna was trying to do when he was addressing Arjuna as Kaunteya or Kaunteya or, Pritha, or Partha, right? So, now, this time, Arjun is also referring to him as Varshneya, right? So, indirectly, in this particular verse, Arjun is trying to say that, oh, descendant of Krishna, just imagine if you were standing in front in my place and, you know, your whole Krishna dynasty was about to be destroyed, how would you feel, right? <laughs> so, that is the reason why he is indirectly trying to say that, okay, I don't want to fight, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, these are some, you know, internal uh, things that we can analyze with this verse. Another very important thing, what is being mentioned here, that when irreligion is prominent, the women of the family become polluted. Okay, now this is very important thing to understand. Just give me a second. Technical issues today. <laughs> okay. okay, so in this scenario, what Arjun is saying is... Uh, you know, that the women become polluted. Now, that is something which we will try to understand now. How does that happen? Okay. So, if you consider any particular society, okay, any society for that matter, uh, there are two most important pillars of any society. Okay? Most important and very strong pillars of any society. Okay? They are one, women, and second are the children. Why? Because women or the womanhood, basically, they are the ones who actually spend most of the times with the kids, especially when the kids are growing up. Okay, And because kids are spending so much time with the women, I mean, uh, uh, they are learning so much from them. Okay, All the initial teachings are basically imparted to the kids by women. Okay, So just imagine if the, this particular, uh, you know, this womanhood itself is polluted, then what kind of, uh, you know, the 
what kind of children will bring up you know in the society right and the second pillar is the children because they are the future of the society okay so what whatever education they receive whatever teachings they receive basically that will be reflected in their behavior once they grow up okay so now most important thing here so that is the reason why all our vedas and vedic scriptures they lay a lot of stress on protecting women and children okay that in, in all the circumstances women and children should be protected okay because they are the future and they they are the two pillars on which the existence of entire society depends okay so now what happens here what arjun is saying that when the irreligion is prominent oh krishna the women of the family become polluted how the women of the family will become polluted if the irreligion is prominent so just imagine that if all the male members and the elders are killed okay in the battlefield okay then what will happen women and children will be left alone completely unprotected okay so in that scenario what happens irresponsible men will definitely take advantage of the women who are who have been left alone they will drag them into adultery possibly they will drag them to adultery and then this will lead to unwanted progeny okay now another question is that uh, now these women and children are innocent so they are forcibly dragged by irreligious men and irresponsible men you know once uh, all the male members and the elders of the society are killed so how is this adultery going to you know give rise to unwanted progeny now this is where the concept of garbhadhan sanskar comes in okay so in a human life like there are a lot of sanskars that we have to perform okay we at the time of birth of a child like there are certain spirit, uh, uh, ritualistic processes of purification that we do right and then you know when so uh, i don't know how much prevalent it is these days but uh, especially like you know uh, people who are who belong to brahmin class they actually do something known as upanayan sanskar you know where they take the sacred thread you know and uh, <clears throat> Uh, they have to wear it for their entire life okay so that is another sanskar that we do then as we grow up we have to uh, people are you know uh, people get married basically so that is known as pani grahan sanskar okay that means uh, a woman is basically uh, tied in the uh, in the knot of the marriage uh, with a man okay so that is the pani grahan sanskar and then finally uh, you know towards the end of the life that we all know that there are some sanskaras which are known as the antim sanskar that we do you know once the person dies mm-hmm. so but one very important sanskara that we have completely forgotten these days is the garbhadan sanskar okay what happens in the garbhadan sanskar is that uh, before a couple actually uh, you know conceives a child okay when they are planning a baby basically okay so uh, it was not like uh, in the previous yugas it was not like kaliyuga okay that just like cats and dogs you know people get married and then they just uh, unite out of impulse and then you no know, kids are born no it was not like that so previously when they were planning a child a uh, big planning was done okay like they had to they used to go to you know some sages or some you know rishis initially to seek their blessings first they just used to divulge their plan that okay we are planning to have a baby so please bless us with that so all the rishis and the sages were invited at the home and you know they it was a big uh, occasion at that time they used to take the blessings and the uh, sages would actually look up all the charts and everything and then they used to tell them the right time you know when they can unite and they can you know uh, conceive the baby so uh, during that period the couple actually followed complete celibacy and some a lot of rules and regulations some regulatory processes they had to follow and when the right and during all these time they completely indulge themselves into spiritual activities okay like uh, you know listening about the name form qualities and past times of the lord so that the consciousness is like that okay and with that consciousness when the right time came the couple used to unite and then you know uh, the baby was born so when this happens what happens is that we get a vaikuntha child what is a vaikuntha child that means the child uh, 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 one uh, i mean that child for whom this particular birth is the last birth okay like after that they will just go back home back to krishna okay so such a soul actually enters the womb of the mother when the proper garadhan sanskar is done and these child are absolute gems okay they are all rounder in every fields like 
whether it's the field of uh, you know studies or you know like uh, social interactions or sports or whatever they will simply excel at everything okay but we hardly see those kind of kids these days why because there is no garvadan sanskar so now what happens so this is what you know how important the consciousness of the couple is you know when they are uniting actually now when religion actually uh, is prominent as arjun is saying in this particular verse what is happening that the there is no consciousness like at, at least from the side of the men like the consciousness will be completely gone right they are into that animal consciousness when they are you know forcibly bringing women into adultery right so then what happens is uh, with uh, that kind of consciousness what will happen demonic kids will be born okay and this is the most important take away like from this particular verse that just see around okay just because we are not doing garbhadan sanskar we are simply acting impulsively today what is happening we are just you know like uh, the couples are mating like you know cats and dogs and just see the kind of offsprings they are you know are being produced these days like they are absolutely demoniac i mean i'm sorry that i'm coming very hard on you know the kids of today but then we are seeing this uh, animal consciousness that we have okay and slowly what will happen that this population will go on increasing okay this is the uh, what to say verdict of shri uh, shrimad bhagavatam actually in kaliyuga this is the kind of uh, you know offspring will be produced and the religion will prevail in the entire society okay so it's very important that uh, we do this garbhadhan sanskar and all these con temples like if uh, you know you can just spread the news amongst your friends and family that if anyone is interested they can just you know contact any scon temple near them it is being done in all these scon temples actually okay that is one take away another important take away is that what shilabhopad writes here that the varnashram religions uh, varnashrama religious uh, religions principles were so designed that good population would prevail in society for general spiritual progress of the community such population depends on the chastity and faithfulness of its womanhood okay so that means if a woman and i have i think stressed on this particular point in my earlier sessions also that the biggest power of any married woman okay is the chastity towards her husband and towards her family okay with that actually just see like you know what uh, i always cite this example of gandhari what could she do she completely transformed the body of her son duryodhan you know in, into something as strong as a vajra okay so just because of her chastity towards her husband right her husband was blind okay he was not a very good person but uh, gandhari knew what the stri dharma was that okay now that i have been married to this person i have to remain chaste so what she did she do she started wearing a blindfold for her entire life that if my husband is blind i will also not see anything okay so with that you know just see that the kind of power she amassed during all those years that just by you know glancing at her son his entire body was you know transformed into something really really strong okay and had it not been for lord sri krishna i think uh, duryodhan would have actually beaten him in the last uh, you know that tada yudh that happened between the two of them okay so this is the importance of chastity but then uh, if you see in today's prevalent uh, society you know what is being prevalent the living relationships are prevalent and again lot of times the so called liberals have accused scorn of uh, you know that why is scorn so you know uh, uh, narrow minded why they have so you know retrograde think- thinking okay why do they speak so much against the living relationships which are there okay when we go to the scon temples why is it that the women and men are allowed to sit you know separately why is not you know free mixing or free mingling of men and women are there so because these people they don't understand the basic science of garvadhan sanskar okay not you tell me that if a woman like is living in a, is a, having a lot of living relationships like she she is sleeping with uh, multiple men okay before ultimately getting married or similarly a man is sleeping with multiple women before getting married this is a kind of addiction right now you tell me that once uh, this man or this woman gets married how much uh, you know chaste they will be towards their spouse how much loyal they will be towards their spouse they, it's just not possible okay the moment they see someone from the opposite opposite gender they will be simply attracted towards them okay so that chastity is not there then what will happen again that animal consciousness is there and with that animal consciousness what will happen unwanted progeny okay irreligious offsprings will be there correct 
So this is a deep science, deep subtle science, okay, which people don't understand these days. And they simply, in the name of, uh, you know, what to say, uh, liberal mindset or open-mindedness or, you know, open society, open culture, they are simply, you know, criticizing ISKCON or the other, you know, paramparas or, I mean, the other sampradayas who are actually vouching for you know, making the society more streamlined and more, you know, like uh, full of good population, basically. Right. So this is the sad reality of the society today. One very important takeaway, which we can take out, you know, from this particular shloka. Okay. So that brings us to the last shloka of the day. I'll share my screen again. Okay. Um, Shweta Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. yeah. So please repeat after me. Shankaro Naraka Yeva. Shankaro Naraka Yeva. Kulagna Nam Kulasicha. Kulagna Nam Kulasicha. Patanti Pitaro Yesham. Patanti Pitaro Yesham. Look the Pindo the Kakriya. Look the Pindo the Kakriya. Please read the translation. Yeah, perfect. I'll explain. Yeah, translation. An increase of unwanted population certainly cause, causes hellish life both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. The ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is a very important verse again, spraying so, laying so much stress on uh, you know the pindadan or the pindodaka kriya that we do for our forefathers actually. Okay. So pindodaka we, is what it uh, means is pinda means uh, food. And Odaka means water. Okay, so it is a general, you know, uh, practice in India. That spe specifically, we have seen this, you know, mostly in the uh, one particular month, which is known as the Pitri Paksha, which is somewhere in autumn, around September or October, you know, towards the last week of September or first week of October, it is observed. And uh, I think it's uh, 15 days, you know, of a lunar calendar. Okay, it's there. And during these 15 days, we generally offer uh, you know, this food and water, which are which is known as the Pindadan, to our ancestors, okay, or to our forefathers. So this is a very important practice that we have to follow without fail for each and every one of us. Why? Because this is what it is, uh, you know, mentioned in this particular verse. Okay. So. What Shri Prabhupada is saying, according to the rules and regulations of fructive activities, there is a need to offer periodical food and water to the forefathers of the family. This offering is performed by worship of Vishnu because eating the remnants of the food offered to Vishnu can deliver one from all kinds of sinful reactions. So one very hilarious thing I can recall that there was one person actually. <laughs> so what they were following, so they didn't believe into in these things much. So yeah, but at least once in a year, they used to offer something to their forefathers. And what was the criteria of the offering was that whatever that person used to like when they were alive, they used to offer the same things. So there was, <laughs> so his grandfather, he was a big time drunkard and ate a lot of meat. So they always offered him meat and wine <laughs> every year. <laughs> so this is what happens, you know, when <laughs> the irreligion prevails in the society, as Arjun was saying in the previous verses, right? That we just uh, start following whatever, you know, we think is right, basically, without considering or without uh, consulting the scriptures, okay? So this is not correct, okay? We have seen here, like in the purport of Srila Prabhupada, what he is mentioning, that only food and water offered to Lord Vishnu or Krishna, okay? That can relieve a person from all sinful reactions. Okay, so that that is what we actually offer. You know, when we are doing that pindo kriya. Okay, so we chant some mantras as an offering to Lord Vishnu, and then we offer that to. Now, uh, 
why this is so important again we'll see when remnants of these foods are offered to the forefathers by descendants of the forefathers they are released from ghostly or other kinds of miserable life now just consider that it might be that all our forefathers may not be very pious people okay they might have committed some sinful you know activities or other and in general in kalyuga especially like we all are sinful okay until and unless we are chanting uh, the hari krishna maha mantra it's very difficult to relieve yourself from the sinful reactions because this material world is designed in such a way that uh, you will you are bound to commit sins okay even with the food that you eat you know you are actually committing sin because we are actually you know consuming a life right whether you are a vegetarian or non vegetarian doesn't matter okay you are consuming a life so that sinful reaction will be there okay and for that you will have to suffer so just by offering that food to you know uh, krishna before we you know honor it as a prasadam what we are doing we are making it karma free okay that is one thing and similarly by chanting the hari krishna maha mantra we are simply getting rid of all the sinful reactions which are there so these two things are very very important eating only prasadam and secondly chanting the hari krishna maha mantra so what happens is that if someone is you know have had done very you know sinful activities in the in the when they were alive basically so obviously they can be they might have got a birth in some you know miserable state in a family which is in a miserable state and they might be suffering a lot you know in that birth or if the sinful reactions are very high for that individual they might even not get a gross body at all they might be you know moving around like ghosts and spirits and that is trust me one of the most miserable you know conditions to be in okay because what happens is that all your desires will be there okay the desire to gratify your senses will be there you will feel hunger you will feel thirst you will uh, uh, you know like anything material desires that we have everything will be there but you will not have a body to satisfy those desires just imagine how miserable condition that is right so they might be stuck in that kind of form okay if uh, they were they had been very sinful so this pindo daka kriya actually helps them to relieve themselves from those kind of uh, miserable situations and ultimately get a good body at least okay if not human body and then you know progress from there okay so this is very important and under no circumstances we should uh, you know skip this particular uh, you know uh, offering that we do every year to our forefathers okay so this is very important for any progressive society okay and why do we offer these things like uh, you know one can argue that okay he have when that person was alive i even don't even know i mean apart from my father and grandfather i don't know like who my great grandfather was or who people you know before him was him were right so why should i even care for them okay uh, what uh, what is the point of you know offering food and water to those people whom i don't even know okay so this is where our vedic uh, scripture what our vedic scripture tells us okay prabhupada is citing a very nice shloka that in general we are indebted to six people six uh, uh, people we are indebted to i'll just try to find that shloka and read it out yes it says devar shi भूतापतृणा पितृणा न किंको नृणीचराजन सर्वात्मना शरण शरण्यम गुकुंद लोटस फीट ऑफ मुकुंदा गिवर ऑफ लिबरेशन गिविंग ऑफ ऑल काइंड ऑफ ऑब्लिगेशन ही एंड हैज टेकन द पाथ ऑफ इन ऑल सीरियसनेस owes neither duties nor obligations to the demigods sages general living entities family members and human kind or forefathers okay so there are six uh, entities whom we are always indebted to right one is a deva devarshi so deva dev means the demigods rishi means the sages bhuta means all the other living entities which are around us okay apta that means our family members nridam means other human beings around us okay and pitri now which is our forefathers okay so six uh, entities we are always indebted to why because we have our very life is because of them the, our very existence is because of them okay for example just imagine uh, the demigods okay the surya dev it gives us light and heat and because of which life fl- flourishes on this planet okay the pavan dev gives us air to breathe okay varun dev gives us the water okay indra gives us the rains okay so similarly sages are there okay 
other living entities are there right for example plants like if we uh, if plants are not there what will we eat okay so we are so much indebted to them correct similarly other nirinam our family members they do so much for us okay so we are indebted to them now if we try to uh, you know get rid of the debt of each and every uh, of these entities then it will you know take us till uh, almost eternity right to get rid of all the debt and with every birth that we take we will be indebted even further okay then what is the solution so it is uh, said here sharanam sharanyam gato that means you take the shelter of whom mukunda okay that means vishnu or krishna okay so with that what will happen and follow that in all seriousness okay what will happen that means parihritya kartam that means the human uh, he has no duties or obligations after that okay that means if you are just surrendering yourself to krishna you are just following krishna consciousness very seriously you are not indebted to anyone you are not li liable you know to pay any debts or repay any debts to any anyone okay otherwise you just imagine say for example the demigods what can we do for them okay what can we do for pavan dev or what can we you know do for varun dev or what can we do for sun god nothing we can absolutely do nothing to you know uh, give them back for what they are giving to us right so just only thing is to take shelter of lord krishna and just chant hare krishna maha mantra very seriously follow krishna consciousness very seriously and you know that will actually free us from all the debt and not only that as we have seen in the previous verses that our upcoming generations will also become religious and automatically the irreligion will go away otherwise it's uh, actually already predicted that over a period of time this irreligiousness will actually prevail in society and ultimately you know lord kalki will come okay but the good thing is that uh, since lord chaitanya mahaprabhu the advent of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was just 500 or 550 years back from today so this period is known as the golden period from so the appearance of lord chaitanya from that particular time to next 10000 years so these 10000 years which we are living in right now is the golden period that means during this period practicing spirituality is fairly simple okay after these 10000 years there will be no bhagavad gita there will be no serious spiritual practice uh, going on okay and it will be very very difficult for people to believe in something like god okay they will become complete atheists and irreligion will prevail okay so in that scenario even if someone wants to practice spirituality they will not be allowed to do that okay so we are very very fortunate that we are in this golden period where you know practicing human uh, spirituality is so easy and it it has been made even easier by lord chaitanya uh, simply chanting hare krishna mahamantra hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, ram hare hare So just keep doing this and uh, you know perfect your human life okay by breaking the cycle of birth and death okay don't wait for the next lifetime because we don't know where we will land up in the next life okay so just uh, you know as prabhupad used to say just hold on tight to my dhoti and i'll take you back okay so uh, with that mood i would like to pause here and i would like to you know open the stage for the questions any questions any realizations that all of you have please okay ishita mata ji is having a question please mata ji go ahead so uh, hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna this discussion was really uh, something very relatable uh, hmm. what you explained us today yes. uh, there were few few questions that when i was hearing i was concentrating unfortunately i was concentrating more on the questions than uh, you know trying to listen to you understand to you uh, yeah. these are so materialistic uh, that mm -hmm. this happened mm -hmm. so i'll i'll go from the last thing that we discussed to the mm -hmm. first thing okay. so uh, we spoke we we spoke about uh, you know uh, polluting the women we spoke about elders who can mm -hmm. guide us uh, mm -hmm. on different things now mm -hmm. we also discussed about the families are getting smaller yes so at this stage uh, we as a family i mean i i am living with uh, so ours is also a nuclear family so taking my example yes for anything we rarely reach out to our parents thinking that they are old Absolutely. even if the solution that we receive from them is yeah. not something that may be suitable for us could be mm -hmm. if they were in a situation they it could have so be so it would have been suitable to them mm -hmm. that's the first thing Correct. and uh, 
sometimes i mean from a very personal experience i'm sorry to disrespect anybody here but mm -hmm. out of um, i mean really sorry about that that's not my intention mm -hmm. but uh, my personal experience goes that it's better that we solve the problem among both of us me and my husband so mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to reach anybody else because mm -hmm. what will they do except for mm -hmm. just worrying about us mm -hmm. they are old yeah so Second. so this yeah this is not about the general day to day problems that we are facing mata ji okay i was talking about the spiritual practices that we do okay at a lot of times like for example i'll give my example very recently i lost one of my uncles actually okay and uh, what happened that we all know that uh, you know when there is a death in the family then so there are a lot of uh, you know spiritual practices that we have to do religious practices that we have to do okay and uh, to our surprise if you see that uh, and people from different communities are also called you know they have to perform certain rites and rituals which are there and when we called them i was we were surprised to see that no one had any idea about what to do okay ki are theek hai jo man mein kar lijiye bas shraddha se karna chahiye no it's not like that okay so at these times these are the times when we need the guidance of experienced folks because they have done it already they know the process and then they can show us the right path so this is the point where you know uh, we are actually losing you know when we are shrinking into a nuclear family because there is no one left to guide us okay so in that scenario what we do we take the shelter of the bhagavad gita and the shelter of the senior devotees okay the devotee association so together like if someone is well read and will learn it in our vedic scriptures they can give you the true guidance that okay what can be done in this particular situation okay it's not about day to day materialistic problems that we are facing yeah that obviously we can we are good enough to handle that and we should be doing that we should not be troubling our parents for every you know small things right so it's about the big problems or the especially the spiritual or the ritualistic practices that uh, we do in those terms we need to uh, get some guidance okay and prabhu ji yeah did i answer that yeah, yes is i had a, one yeah. more question yes, please go uh, but i think vasavi mata ji has also raised her hand would you yeah we'll go to her we'll go to, yeah we'll go to her first if you complete yours okay the second question that i had was um in this uh, i mean uh, you you spoke about different rituals that uh, that used to should be practiced uh, mm -hmm. before uh, planning a child Hmm. Um, ah, I don't think I have. I don't have no one, no one any clue that, about it. it. <laughs> no one does yeah. that. Even I am just like that, born like that. <laughs> so see, that is the reason why, Mata Ji. Uh, yeah. So now, the, I I think your question might be that what can be done now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, absolutely. Nothing. So the thing is that you are already on the right path. Okay. That since you are on a Saturday evening, you are sitting in a devotee association. That itself shows that Krishna is merciful on you. see it always remember one thing that krishna chooses the devotees okay we no matter how much we want you know that uh, you know desire to practice the spiritual uh, uh, spirituality actually comes from within you know because krishna is seated within our hearts sarvasya chaham riddhi sannivishto matta smritir gyanam apohanam cha okay i give them the knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness this is what krishna is saying okay so if you are sitting in this particular session then that means you are already on the right track and then you don't need to worry because see even all of us like most of if you see 99% of the society i did do not have any clue about this garbh dhan sanskar right so if you look at my life like how i became a devotee <laughs> it is like i don't know i sometimes feel very uh, comic situation that i just you know picked up from a street and made a devotee you know just like that okay so in my never not even in my weirdest dreams i would have thought that i would be sitting here giving a class on bhagavad gita okay and giving a class on shrimad bhagavatam at our center right <laughs> this was something which was completely unimaginable for me okay i was singing some random bollywood songs and recording them having a separate youtube channel these were the activities that i was doing right so it's uh, okay like in this kaliyuga i know it's everything is topsy turvy but from this point on now that you know it just try to spread the word so that any couple who are planning to have a baby in the near future they also have this idea and then they can get a nice you know vaikuntha child in the womb of the mother right so this is the whole intent that way i find myself very lucky because yes. uh, my mom told me 
when you think about having a child becoming a mother mm-hmm. ju- just say uh, so in in my family my mother says narayan a lot the word yes. narayan yeah, i mean if she is yeah. in pain she will say oh narayan mm-hmm. i mean that way she will say right. uh, so yeah so i was no, lucky I that my mom got a very good guidance i think you got a yeah. very good guidance so just uh, you know like uh, train your kid from this very age itself okay and then just see uh, they will just grow up into some you know wonderful human beings actually hari krishna puri yeah okay uh, wasami mata ji you can go next hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna mata ji dono pranam prabhu just this was regarding uh, hmm. we can approach our elders for whatever hmm. religious practice we want yes. what if even those people hmm. even if they know it hmm they not ready to tell you Uh, that is the they, uh, yeah, and they, maybe mm-hmm. they don't know mm-hmm. and if we go to these uh, uh, dikshits uh, mm-hmm. that is the purohits in pandits mm-hmm. uh, they will give us a, a very prolonged procedure mm-hmm. which we will not be able to do it mm-hmm. this i am telling you because i am in a joint family mm-hmm. and i cannot just decide things yes yes No, so yeah that? so so when you cannot decide mata ji then you just play your part okay what can you do you can just give a suggestion okay so but somewhere we will be knowing that you know, this is not it this is the other way which we have to do yeah then it's fine like there's a part like you know uh, the part that you have to play okay just as i always cite example of gandhari gandhari always knew that her husband is not right okay yeah. but then, yeah she knew what the stree dharma was okay so knowing that you just uh, remain within your limitations but then always offer an advice okay that uh, okay we can take some input from iskon devotees some senior devotees of iskon or maybe we can read the bhagavad gita every day that that might give us you know some insights on what we have to do what not to do and ultimate decision yes since you are in a joint family then obviously the elders will take the ultimate call but i think there is no stopping even i grew up in a joint family so i know that there is no stopping from giving an advice and doing your bit okay so don't just remain silent if you see something is going wrong just at least in a polite and a humble way just say that okay i feel that uh, this should be done or this should not be done and then press uh, leave the rest to the elders yeah whatever call they do they take okay Just even follow your criticize, your dharma. Criticize me. Uh, sorry, Mata Ji, can you please come again? Even if you criticize me, <laughs> no, so because that's I'm what... the youngest of all, okay. and the minute I say something, or oh, she behaves like you know, she knows everything. Like, <laughs> so, so should I ignore that and just that, tell that, whatever that, I want yeah. to tell? Yeah, in a humble way, you can just say. Uh, but yeah, if that is the case, then yeah, I think that is uh, subject to. It's a very subjective question, then, right? Like, what is the environment in, at your home and all those things? That will be also considered. But uh, as far as possible, try to do your bit. You know, that is the bottom line. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, Krishna Mata. Because see, ultimately, one thing always remember that all of us, Shri Ram Bhagwan always used to say, okay, that all of us are riding our own planes. When a plane, an aeroplane, is on the runway. it's grounded then there are lot of support staff ground staff is there to take care of it okay but once it takes off ultimately it's only in the hands of pilot okay we all are pilots of our own plane we have to break the cycle of life and death first for ourselves and then for people around us okay so just think on those lines and then take the call like what is best okay thank you sir yeah hari krishna hari anyone else Okay. If not, then we can end this session because I am in a hurry today. But yeah, it was really good to see all of you joining in on Saturdays. And just please, I think I am really impressed by the attendance. Actually, uh, please, please, please spread this word. Try to bring in more people. Okay, I will be happy. Like if we go beyond fifteen and then beyond thirty, right? We'll we want to just keep growing. Just tell them that okay, we have just started. We are on chapter one only, so they have not missed out. you know something big actually okay they will not miss out anything big until unless we reach the mid part of the bhagavad gita okay so we have so much of time okay just try to bring in more people all of you whom you know just keep spreading the word and then yes we will take it from there thank you so much again everyone hari krishna thank you
हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण